side. All oh, hail King Jesus. There is no one, no one like Jesus. Let us pray. Oh wise and gracious Father, we come to you just to say thank you for allowing us to come into your house thank to you. praise you just one more time, Lord. Lord, we thank you for waking us up this morning, starting us on our way, and allowing us to freely praise and lift your name on high. Lord, we ask that you come into this service today, Lord, and just have your way. Lord, just continue to lift up Northside Baptist Church. We ask that you go into every house of worship this morning that is open, that is praising your name. Lord, we will be ever so careful to continue to give you all of the praises, all of the glory, and all of the honor. And it is in Jesus' mighty name that we do pray. Amen. Amen. He has done marvelous things. Praise the Lord. He has done marvelous He has done marvelous. Good morning and this morning scripture will come from Ephesians 3 verses 16 through 18 and it reads may he grant you out of the riches of his glory to be strengthened and spiritually energized with power through his spirit in your inner self indwelling the innermost being and personality so that God so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through your faith and may you have been deeply rooted and securely grounded in love, be fully capable and comprehending with all the saints the width and the length, the height and the depth of his love, fully experiencing that amazing, endless love. Amen. Amen. We're just going to talk to the Lord today. We're going to tell him that he's so good. Lord, you are good. You've 
been so good. Lord, you're good. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can praise you enough. I owe you my life. I owe you my life. I can praise you enough. Good morning. Good morning. We go morning. forward in worship this morning with the words of Psalm 19, beginning at the seventh verse, in our minds. It reads, the law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the drippings of the honeycomb. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O oh Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Let us continue worshiping by singing hymn number 258, Victory in Jesus.
Thank you for the victory we have in Jesus yeah. and for the privilege each week of coming together to share that victory with sisters and brothers in the faith as we worship your holy name. Fill this place with your spirit. Yes, God. Fill our hearts with your power. Fill our mouths with your praise. And we'll be careful to give you all of the honor you deserve through Jesus Christ, your Son, and our Savior who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Spirit of the living God. Again, good morning. It is good to see your smiling faces, both physically and virtually. If you're worshiping with us on Facebook Live, we invite you to say good morning, post a comment, and to share our worship with your friends and followers. Amen? Amen. Isn't it wonderful that we know every Sunday when we come to church, we're gonna get a positive, inspiring, uplifting message because there's so much negativity so much meanness and snarkiness in the world you don't have to go far to see it and experience it but every Sunday when yeah. we come into this space of worship yeah, yeah, yeah. we come to lift up the name of Jesus and in turn, we find ourselves lifting up. And I don't know about you, but I'm glad about that today. Yeah. I thank God for it today. We'd like to share together the vision and mission of our church. So I invite you, those of you who are here in person and those of you who are with us virtually, 
to say with me the vision statement of our church. Northside Baptist Church is intentional about making and growing disciples and empowering people to live changed lives. Amen. Pastor, how long has that been our vision statement? Can you say? Since 2012, that has been our vision for 11 years. And I think about how I have grown and changed over these 11 years. And I thank God for this vision, you know, because when we want to, when they go low, what did Michelle Obama say? We go high. And the vision helps us. And then our mission is simply, or our theme is God first. And that is from Matthew 36, 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Amen? Amen. Uh, just a few short announcements, which you see in your bulletin, but I'd like to highlight. Uh, one is to ask you to please save the date and mark your calendars. On Saturday, July 29th at 1 p.m., we will hold our church business meeting here in McMillan Hall. Uh, Bible study continues every Wednesday at 12 noon on Zoom. And the link for that, as well as more information, is available on our website, www.northsidebaptistbaltimore.org. Amen. We also invite all of you to join us for prayer on Mondays and Wednesdays at 645 on our free conference call line. The dial-in number is in your bulletin. It is also on the screen and available on the website. And it does not matter if you have never come to prayer before. You are welcome. It's very easy breezy. We say what we want to pray for. We share what we want to praise God for. We pray. That's it. And for those of us who have been on the line regularly for these past three plus years, we can tell you that it is a blessing, a blessing to come together in prayer. Hand in Hand Women's Ministry also has a women's prayer call at 1015 on Saturday morning. Everyone is welcome. And on Sunday mornings before worship, we have Sunday school in person at 9.30 a.m. I think that's it. I'd like to call on Sister Linda White now, who is going to make a special announcement. Won't you receive her? And it's her birthday. And it's also <laughs> Sister Deborah Wilson's birthday. Good morning again, Northside. I don't know if you all were aware that July has two holidays. Did you know that? Anybody know that? <laughs> no, no, no. We're not talking about that one. <laughs> Next Sunday is Pastor Parrish's birthday. That's our holiday. So this is just a reminder that um, our pastor's birthday is next Sunday, the 23rd. So be prepared to share your love and good wishes with our pastor. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. I'm going to be another year better, not just another year older. All right. <laughs> Amen. And happy birthday to all of the other saints who are celebrating this month. I don't know, it feels like we have more saints born in July than any other month. March may be a close second. Um, so let me just hit on a couple of things. First of all, to say good morning to each of you and how grateful I am that you have seen fit to come to be in worship in this place. For those of you who are joining us online, God bless you. Whether you are with us on Sunday or whether you join us later in the week, God be praised for what God is doing. Um, we are, those of you who've been around Northside prior to the pandemic will know that for a year we had the great pleasure of having a personal friend um, be with us in this place. And Brother Jerome Williams is here today worshiping with us. And we're so grateful for all that God has brought him through. Now, I would be a poor host, right, if I have somebody come visit us and I don't stay and be a good host, right? So I need those of you who might be able 
Uh, this has been announced, it's been shared that at six o'clock this evening, there is a public action being sponsored by BUILD at the Memorial Baptist Church on North Caroline Street. Um, it's very easy for us to get worked up about things when something flares up, but the situation of vacant and abandoned houses in Baltimore City is an ongoing challenge. And so the organizers of BUILD are going to have a, an action this evening at six o'clock at the Memorial Baptist Church, 1311 North Caroline Street. And I hope that if your schedule allows, you will attend. So last Sunday, I asked you to keep a secret, right? You remember what the secret was? Ooh. Oh, so <laughs> Out of the mouths of babes. He said, we might have forgotten it, but we kept it. Okay. <laughs> Isn't that, boy, I'm going to have you preach soon. God bless you. So September 2nd is going to be a wonderful day in the life of this church. First, we're going to, um, uh, I've been approached by one of our newer disciples about us doing something we have not done in a long time, and that is to go to the street corner and to tell people about Jesus. And so at 10 o'clock that morning from 10 until 11 on the corner of Northern Parkway and York Road, we're going to tell people about Jesus and we're going to invite them to come to Northside. Then at 12 o'clock on Saturday, September 2nd, we're going to have our annual church cookout. Now in years past, we have, we have beat the drum, we've blown the whistle, we've tried to have bouncies, we've had slideys, we've had pools. We're not going to try to do all that this year. What we are going to do is we're going to have hot dogs and hamburgers. Uh, if you need to bring fruit, that'll be great. We're going to have uh, water and chips, and we're going to spend time focusing on being with one another as opposed to cooking the cookout that ends all cookouts. So Saturday, September 2nd, thank you for keeping the secret. Now you can tell other people what we're about. There are sign out sheets, sign up sheets out in the vestibule if you are interested in helping to set up, helping to clean up, or being of any other assistance on that day, and we will say more about that as that day approaches. The last thing that um, I need to make sure we lift up is that in as much as we are a, a family that rejoices together, uh, the Bible teaches us that whenever one of us grieves, because we are a family, we all grieve together. And in this last week, two of our disciples have lost loved ones, Sister Darlene Armstrong and also Sister Minnie Alexander. And you may or may not know them, but they are a part of us and they are a part of you. And so even if you don't remember their names in your prayer time this week, I'm going to ask that you would just lift up the Alexander family and the Armstrong family um, in your time of prayer. There are other families that have been impacted this week. Uh, we've had people who've broken limbs. Uh, we've had people who've been struggling uh, with um, diagnoses that they have received from doctors. But these two families are walking that, that area that is always a challenge for us to walk, particularly when it is a loved one in our family. So please lift up the Armstrong family. Please lift up the Alexander family this week, and we will thank God for you. And as to next Sunday, I look forward to seeing y'all. We're not going to do anything out in the parking lot, right? I'm going to ask my messenger here who knows. <laughs> Amen. I'm going to ask Dr. Thomas to come back. I'm going to be really well behaved um, and, and not say anything that I might get in trouble for. How's that? I don't know. I just feel like running around today for some reason. God is so good. And it's giving time at Northside Baptist Church. Yay! And we applaud because it is a privilege to give. 
You can give, of course, the uh, traditional way, both uh, checks and cash in an envelope or left in our secure box. You can also give electronically using the GiveLify app, which you download and you select Northside Baptist Church and you make your gift. That's the way I give, but we're happy to receive all gifts. Um, so I give electronically and I left my phone at my seat, so I'm holding my virtual phone in my hand and we ask all of you to hold your gifts in your hand. And as we prepare to give, we make an affirmation about our gift and about our God. So please repeat after me, divine love, divine love. Through, me, through me blesses and multiplies this gift. Blesses and multiplies this gift. It, blesses it blesses the receiver and returns to the giver. Blessed and multiplied. Please follow the direction of our ushers. Enjoy the ministry of our choir as we give together. present our faith and hope in the vision of empowered and changed lives. We pray that you will bless us and bless these gifts, that they will be used for the building of your kingdom and for the honor of your great name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow.
And for that reason alone, we ought to offer God yes, our God. praise and thanksgiving. Because God did not have to do it. God is not under obligation to us. We are under obligation to God. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to do this a little bit differently today. I'm going to ask you to keep your seats. I want to read the first nine verses of the Gospel of Matthew, the 13th chapter. And after I read that, then I'm going to invite you to stand because I need to read the second part. So Matthew 13, you may remain seated. Matthew 13, reading from the New Revised Standard Version, finds this. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there. While the whole crowd stood on the beach and he told them many things in parables saying, listen, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil and they sprang up quickly since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. So now I've read verses one through nine, and if you are able, the verses I want to teach from, preach from today are verses 18 through 23. I need you to bypass verses 10 through 17, and if you are able to stand, for the reading of that which we will focus on, I invite you to stand. Matthew 13, 18 through 23. Again, it is Jesus still speaking, and we find these words. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. That is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. I've read in your hearing Matthew 13, 1 through 9, and 18 through 23, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Use me now, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Sorry, did not mean to throw you. Uh, I am a, I am an avid fan of the preaching of Dr. Marcus D. Cosby, a pastor of the Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church in Houston. Dr. Cosby preaches one verse, that's it. So I'm going to err on the other side of that today by trying to bring your attention to all of these verses. But what I want to talk about for a little while is the sower, the seed, and the soil. The sower, the seed, and the soil. Today I am inviting your attention and I'm inviting 
your consideration. I'm inviting that after church is over, after you've turned off your computer or closed the app on your phone, after you have taken your notes, if you are here in worship on or in your Bible or on your phone, that when you go home again, when you return home today, I want you to look at this parable one more time. I have been trying to get it clear in my head so that I could whittle it down so that it was digestible for us in a preaching moment. And one of the things that occurs to me is the consistency with which this story appears in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. It is rare for a story to appear in all three Gospels without some significant variance. But there must be something about this story because Matthew, Mark, and Luke said, listen, we're not going to stray from each other's account of this moment. What happens is that this, the crowds that have been swelling and swarming after Jesus have made Jesus turn his boat into his lecture hall, Dr. Thomas. Mm -hmm. They've made Jesus turn his boat into his pulpit and his preaching station because the people have become so numerous that without the aid of amplification like we have today, Jesus could not be heard by all of these people who were gathered around. And so you get this sense of the crowd standing on the seashore. And Jesus saying to his disciples, listen, let me make this boat a pulpit because I've got something I need to tell you that everybody else might not understand. I have something that I need to share with you that people who are just here for me changing water to wine, they're going to miss this. People who come just to, to watch me tell people to take up their bed and walk, they're going to miss this because this is one of the most critical and misunderstood things that we're going to find in all of Jesus' teaching. We find Jesus talking about the sower, we find Jesus talking about the seed, and we find Jesus talking about the soil. I needed to read verses 1 through 9 so that you would be able to have the backdrop of verses 18 through 23. Because outside of having heard 1 through 9 and having it fresh in our minds, listening to Jesus pick up the explanation might be a little confusing. For that matter, it has been said that many of the parables which are generally used to help teach us things that we otherwise wouldn't get, this, that many of the parables end up confusing folk more than they end up clarifying things. So Jesus says, okay, listen, let's, let's, let's get some parameters. Jesus talks about a sower. Jesus talks about some seed. Jesus talks about some soil. In this parable, there is only one sower. Okay, so if you want to make note, that's, that's the first note. There's only one sower. The second note, there's only one seed. The sower is God. The seed, we learn in verse 8, was wheat, grain. So now we got that part figured out. But Jesus says this seed is sown by the sower in four different places. The four different places are not necessarily physical places, but they are descriptions of the state of people's spirits as they hear the word of God. Are you with me? It is not a condemnation of anybody but rather it is a realization that all of us are not in the same place in our relationship with God. Jesus says, let me just provide four examples of what can happen and what does happen when we have differing relationships with the word of God, okay? Am I still making sense? Okay, so Jesus says, let's, let's begin this teaching 
by talking about different kinds of soil. Mm -hmm. The four kinds of soil on which the seed fell would have immediately been recognized by the farmers in Jesus' day. I was talking to one of our disciples earlier this week and I shared with them how so much of Jesus' teaching rose out of the society they lived in. They lived in an agrarian society. They didn't have subways and, and, and cell phones. They had farmers. There were people who grew things on vines. There were people who understood that night comes and then you got to make sure that your sheep are protected at night from those prowlers and those those people, those, those wolves, those animals that want to hurt them. Jesus did not talk about how we're going to raise and grow a church by talking about how many watts are in a light bulb. That would have been totally disconnected to these people, right? So Jesus talks about things that are familiar to them. And he talks about the throwing of seed. Now, for us, it might not make sense. It, does, it seems like waste to just throw the seed. But in Jesus' day, farmers who lived next to each other did what, what one commentator calls, they broadcasted the seed. They just threw the seed wherever they could. They didn't have fancy machines. Their John Deere was not in existence when this happened. There was no Sears and Roebuck to sell uh, lawnmowers. Farmers went out with seed in their bag and they just threw the seed as far as they could. And what happened was the seed would fall in four different places. Places. The first three kinds of soil are all lacking and inadequate. None of them represents what God wants us to be. The only thing that's different is the soil. So let's take a moment and see if we can get what Jesus is talking about. The first example of the first kind of soil is the path. If you want to take notes, you can write the path. That's the person who is not rejecting the word of God, but the person who does not have the word of God seep into them. They don't understand the word of God. When I was a child, I, the apostle says, I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. I understood as a child. But when I became an adult, I put away what? Childish things. Why? Because I began to understand more about God. I began to understand the importance of loving those who hate you. I began to understand the importance of forgiving those who have done spitefully, done us spitefully wrong. Jesus says the person who is the seed that falls on the path does not have relationship with God because they don't spend any time trying to understand God's word. They don't understand God's word because they are willing to graft from somebody else's shout. They don't understand God's word because they don't spend any time trying to be in relationship with God's word. They have a pastor. They have a deacon. They probably know how to reach the deacon and the pastor in the time of need. They have relationship maybe with the choir. They may have relationship with the ushers or the greeters or one of the other ministries. They may have relationship with their favorite singers, their favorite speakers, and with other people, but they don't have relationship with the seed, which is the word of God. Does that make sense? Jesus says this kind of soil, this kind of person gives up the seed easily. One disagreement, one time not being able to sit where they want to sit when they walk in worship, one time when it takes the deacon or the pastor too long to call them back and they're like, I'm through with that church. Because their relationship is not with God. Their relationship is based on how they can function in their environment. And Jesus says, don't be that kind of seed. Because that kind of seed is easy prey for the devil. 
Are you with me? The example of the second kind of soil is the, is the person who falls, is the seed who falls on rocky ground. Here's what Jesus says. As for what was sown on rocky ground, I'm in verse 20. This is the one who hears the word of God and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. Jesus is teaching us about the importance of truly having the word of God take root in our lives. Mm -hmm. Taking root in our lives means that we can quote more than one verse. I remember as a child, yeah, it was a long time ago, I know, but in vacation Bible school, some of you have had the experience, you would be called on to give your favorite verse. And many of us would use that line from John 11 as our favorite verse. Two words. Come on. Jesus right <laughs> we felt like we had done something we sit down and we go get our cookie <laughs> if all we can ever say about Jesus is that Jesus wept then we have fallen on rocky ground if all we can ever say about Jesus and the word of God is for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have eternal life. We are, are we're in danger of being on rocky ground. Jesus is telling us and telling the disciples, listen y'all, you need to make sure that the word of God takes root in your life. Not a shallow experience, but, but something that goes deep inside of you so that when persecution comes as it will come, and when trials come as they will come, and when troubles come as they will come, you don't have to censor what you say. What you say is the word of God. And it comes forth out from you. Blessed are ye when men and women revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. I hold before you this day life and death. Therefore choose life. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Make sure that the word of God takes root root in you watch this and it's not because people don't like what shade of eyeliner you use it's not because people don't like what year and model car you drive it's about being persecuted for our allegiance to the gospel Remember, I quoted a couple minutes ago, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, I do not understand how in this day and time people and denominations are throwing churches out of fellowship. We ought to be welcoming everybody who wants to be part of us into fellowship that's why on September the 2nd we're going to go to the corner and if we find alcoholics great if we find drug addicts great if we find folk who are abusers great because we don't plan to leave them like we met them we plan to bring them back and show them the love of God which has been deposited into us in that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. Yeah. 
Jesus warns that if we allow the word of God to be easily uprooted out of us, then we will be in trouble. This is the one, Jesus says, who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet because the word of God has not yet taken root of them, when troubles come, they fall away. God is awesome. And we are invited into a relationship with an awesome God. God does not run away when trials come. God does not turn God's back when things get hard. God says, that's exactly why I'm in your life. I'm in your life so that when the winds blow and the storms rage, you have somebody to hold on to. I like the way the saints put it in the song, the road is rough and the going gets tough and the hills are hard to climb. But I started out a long time ago and there is no doubt in my mind, I've decided to make Jesus my choice. Here's another one for you. James 1, 2 through 4 reminds us that we are in the King James language to count it all joy when we fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. All right, here's the one I would invite you to copy. What counts is not our profession. What counts is our perseverance. What counts is not our profession, but what counts is our perseverance. It's easy to follow God when we're surrounded by good-looking folk who come to worship God and are excited about being in the Lord's presence and in the presence of others. But when you have to leave here, when we have to, as the old church used to say, go down from this place yes, yes. and be in the world, and you got your Jesus with you, is your Jesus enough to handle the nonsense you're going to have to deal with in this world? What counts is not our profession of faith, but our perseverance. The third kind of soil, the third kind of person Jesus teaches about is described in this way. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word of God, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing now let's be very clear let me uh, i want to say this as clearly as i can jesus was not opposed to believers having possessions mm -hmm. okay jesus did not tell y'all us to go out and be broke jesus was not opposed to people having possessions Jesus was not opposed to believers having money. Luke's gospel reminds us that it was the women who out of their resources provided for Jesus. This is the same Jesus who said foxes have their, their holes and birds have their nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Jesus was not against possessions. For that matter, Jesus spends a whole lot of time talking about money. Jesus talks about wealth. Jesus was not opposed to it. And I would imagine that Jesus has got to be upset by so many of my colleagues who are co-signers on the name it and claim it, call it and haul it preaching that has made a few folk rich while everybody else is waiting for their blessing. No, Jesus was concerned that our possessions not become the priority in our lives. This caution is as relevant in 2023 as it was in first century Nazareth. Jesus says that if we allow the cares of the world and the lure of wealth to take priority over our relationship with God, 
then our cares and that other stuff will choke out of us our ability to be fruitful as disciples. That's what Jesus said. Jesus said, what I don't want is I do not want you to be so fixated on how many zeros are in your bank account that it causes you not to be able to bear fruit. Because at the end of the day, what God wants to know is have we been faithful over the things God has given us so that the kingdom grows because of us. But if we are preoccupied with our possessions, our possessions and that preoccupation will choke out of us any ability to be a blessing to anybody else. Lord, have mercy. No wonder folk get mad at Jesus. Jesus says, I want to make sure that as God blesses you, that you are free and loving with God, what God has blessed you with. And then Jesus says that, says this. Now, those are the three kinds of soil not to be. But here's the one I want you to be. I want you to be the kind of soil that does an extraordinary thing. When you go home, please look at it again in verses 18 through 23. Because the, probably the most unusual piece of this parable is how much the seed that was planted in good soil was able to produce. Mm -hmm. The Bible says 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold. And when we allow the Word of God, my friends, to take root in our lives, and when we don't allow anything or anybody to come between us and our commitment to God and God's word, then God can do things through us. God can do things because of us that we can't even imagine. See, frequently we want to quote, God is able to do exceedingly abundant beyond what we can ask or imagine. And we want to apply that only to our living. But I believe that what Jesus is trying to show us in this passage is that if we truly nurture and cultivate a relationship with God by understanding God's word, and if we don't allow the first little trouble to trip us up, and if we don't allow ourselves to be choked by the concerns of the world, then God can do something in us that is beyond what ought to be capable. See, in, in normal farming days, and I'm not a farmer, I don't know anything about farming. I'm married to a woman who's growing things at our house. Stuff is growing up out of the ground. I don't know how it happens. We put a seed in the ground. It rained a whole lot. And now my whole backyard is being overtaken by stuff that's sprawling. <laughs> but here's what I will tell you. In a good year, it is unusual for there to be a harvest of 10 times. Are you with me? In a good year, unusual to get 10 times. But what does Jesus say? Jesus says that when you let the word of God take hold of you, what you will be able to produce for the kingdom a hundredfold, mm -hmm. sixtyfold, thirtyfold. Yes. The question is not, is the sower capable? The sower is capable. Yeah. The question is not, is the seed capable? The seed is capable. The question is, is the soil willing? Yeah. Yeah. 
Is the soil available enough to God's word getting deep down inside of us and transforming all of those things that are in us that are not like God and changing all of those attitudes and all of those desires that are inconsistent with what God has for us, then we will allow God to be in charge and then God can do the growing. God can do the multiplying. I was talking to my prayer partner, my Sunday morning prayer partner this morning, Dr. Frank Thomas, and he said, you know, Walter, God, when, when we get to understand the difference between adding and multiplying. I said, Frank, what do you mean? He said, well, you know, two plus two is four. I said, mm-hmm. He said, two times two is four. I said, mm-hmm. He said, 10 plus 10 is 20. I said, mm-hmm. He said, but when you take 10 multiplied by 10, it's 100. Too many of us are only trusting God to add. And not enough of us are trusting God to multiply. Too many of us are comfortable just with the addition. But God is able to multiply in your life so that even when you don't know it, I said this a minute ago, I need to circle back and hit this one one more time. Even when you don't know that God is blessing others because of us, because of what kind of soil we have decided to be, the kingdom grows. 100 times, 60 times, and at the least, 30 times. Jesus says, now, now, you've got it. It's on you. Go and be good soil so that as the word of God sits in you, the word of God might live in you richly, And the word of God might not just change your life and add to your life, but that the word of God might be multiplied in your living so that generations yet unborn will come to have a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ because you were a willing recipient of what the word of God wanted to put in you. The invitation is extended to somebody today who has not truly allowed God to multiply in your life in the ways that God wants to do. Maybe you've been watching and waiting for the preacher or the deacon to do. No, it's not on them to live your life for you, to walk for you. It's on each one of us to live our lives for the kingdom, to live our lives for the Savior. And so if there is someone today, someone who's joining us online or someone who's in the room with us, we offer Christ to you. We offer Christ to you as the one who can give you in your living what you need to be able to multiply 30, 60, a hundredfold and so as we stand throughout this sanctuary as we invite those of you who are joining us online our simple offering is this we offer christ to you my brother we offer christ to you my sister he will make your life brand new we invite you is there one who will come we offer we offer to you my sister oh my sister we invite you he will he will give you brand new life life abundantly life abundantly oh come all you got to do is come come on come on come on is there one we invite you to Christ. One more time, the invitation is still extended. Is there one who will come? We offer Christ to you. Oh, my brother. We offer. We offer Christ to you, 
my sister. Oh, my sister. Here's what he's done for me. He'll give you, he will give you brand new, life. new life abundantly. Life abundantly. Oh, come, come on. Come on, come on, to Christ. to Christ. Amen. You may be seated. Let's just sing that one more time. We offer Christ to you, oh, oh my brother. We, we offer Christ. Abundantly. Life abundantly. Oh, come. Oh, come. come on, come on. Come on. Come on to Christ. To Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Um, so today I need to have a brief meeting with our ushers after worship, so I will not be coming to the door like I normally do, but I am going to ask that you would please, after the benediction, if you are not an usher, that, um, trust me, I'll, I'll be here next Sunday. And I promise I'll stand at the door as long as I need to next Sunday, but we want to, there are some things that our ushers are striving to do, and we just want to make sure we're all on the same page and uh, that I just get a minute with them. Amen? Amen. Amen. Do your best this week to be the kind of soil that the Word of God can take root in and bring forth in abundance, in outrageous disproportion to the size of what we think we're capable of and allow God to bless others because of us. Let us get ready to go forward. Thank you, God, for time spent in your presence. Mm -hmm. Thank you, God, for time spent in the company of other believers. Now, God, we, we have this request. We have this desire that we're asking of you. We don't need you to, to change the sower. We don't need you to change the seed. We need you to change us mm. so that we will be able to be more faithful in living for you. Not because of some demonstration we make, but because of the conviction that's inside of us that requires us to do what you would have us do. Watch over your people. Bless those, God, who will have to say farewell to loved ones this week. We lift them up to you. Bless God. We know that you are able. Yes, God. We know that your word teaches us that you will come and receive those unto yourself who are known by your name. So God, may our families in our church this week be comforted. Keep us safe as we travel across the mean and challenging and dangerous streets of Baltimore City. Keep us safe and saved as we live in this world. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with you henceforth and even forevermore. Let all of God's people say together, amen.
we sing the praises to the king, for he is the king of 